Let's read in our social studies textbook, page 314 through 319. And also, if you're interested, you can continue to check out some How It's Made videos in the Social Studies Supplemental playlist on my YouTube channel. You can take a look at ice cream sandwiches and peanut butter. When you're ready, let's get started on your textbook, page 314. Page 314 says, people at work. In a community, people have different jobs. Many people work in offices. Others have jobs outside. Some people wear uniforms to work. People are working everywhere. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of these jobs and decide if they are services. Let's take a look. Here we have a store clerk. This person is providing a service because here they are helping making sure that the shelves are stocked full of items to purchase and they are paid for their job. A construction worker, really helpful in the community because they are serving others in a way by completing their job and then they get paid for their job. Here we have a dentist, certainly helping by doing a job that we could not do for ourselves. So a dentist is a service as well, helping others and getting paid for that job. A ballet teacher or really any kind of teacher also is a service. If you take a look here, we have a police officer serving the community. A taxi driver here would actually take somebody maybe to an airport perhaps, and that is performing a service for others. And let's see, there's another one here, an architect someone who's building or making plans for a building and probably later we'll have some construction workers helping to make that plan become a reality. When you're ready, let's go ahead and turn the page. You'll see we're here at the end of our unit six, all about the marketplace, goods and services. So our next social studies class time will be our test. So we're gonna to use today as an opportunity to review important vocabulary and things that we have learned from this unit. So let's take a look right here where it says use vocabulary. And here we have our vocabulary words listed and we have what they mean here. I'll read these meanings and then we're gonna try and match up what word matches that meaning. So let's take a look at the words first. Go ahead and repeat after me. Goods, services, market, trade, factory. Okay, let's take a look. Number one, a place where people buy and sell goods. A place where people buy and sell goods. Where would you go to buy a good or sell a good if you made something? Would you go to goods, services, market, trade, factory? Well, think about it. Where do you go when you need to buy something? Maybe just even your own groceries, things that you eat or things that you need for school. Maybe if you need some new clothes. But if we go back to that grocery store, sometimes grocery stores are actually even called a super, hmm. Think about it. It's called a super market. You can also think about a farmer's market too or even online, you can buy things online at an online marketplace. Let's take a look at number two. A building in which people use machines to make goods. Okay, a building which people use machines to make goods. If you've been watching those How It's Made videos, you've seen a lot of these buildings. Are those buildings called goods, services, trade or factory. That type of building is called a factory. Factories are where they make goods. Okay, number three, things people make or grow to sell. All the things that people can make or grow to sell. Things that they can make. For example, the paper that makes up this book all of the pencils you do for writing or crayons, a chair, a table. If you have some other things though, when it says that people can grow, for example, 
if you have a plant, somebody had to grow this plant to sell it. So these kinds of things, items that you either grow or make to sell, those items are called goods, services, trade. They're called goods. Let's keep going. Number four, kinds of work people do for others for money. Kinds of work people do for others for money. Services, trade. Services. Okay, and let's take a look at number five. To give one thing to get another. To give one thing to get another. For example, with this plant, let me get that back out. If I saw this plant at the store and I decided, hmm, I think I would like that plant. Okay, I'm going to take it. Thanks everybody at the store. Thank you for just giving this to me. Thank you. Okay, bye. That's not how that works at a store. That is actually called stealing. That is not what we do. There has to be this giving one thing to get. If I want to get this plant, sure, I may do so, but I have to give something. What is it that I have to give? If I'm at a store, I have to give money or some kind of payment, right? If I pay for this, then I get to take this. Now, sometimes though, there are other opportunities. If you are maybe doing something where you give one thing to get another, it's not always money. For example, maybe you do a chore at somebody else's house and then when they're at your house, they do a different chore for you. There, you are giving and getting, but no money was involved. So this kind of interaction is called a trade, a trade, to give one thing to get another. Let's continue on number six. Where do people buy goods in a community? If you need to buy some goods, where do you go? Just think about your own community. Well, you can go to different kinds of stores. If you wanna buy some food, you can go to a restaurant. The restaurant will have some food there for you. But also you can even go online, right? And buy things on online stores too. Let's look at number seven. What do people use to pay for goods and services? Hmm, if I need to pay for a good and service, what do I use? I could use money. Um, maybe moms and dad have another kind of payment. Maybe they're going to use a credit card. Um, and then also too, we just mentioned, sometimes you can trade one service for another service, right? Maybe I go to a relative's house and I help by raking some of their leaves for them. And then maybe later they come to my house and maybe they fix a leaky faucet for me, right? We can trade also with services. That can be another form of our trade. Let's look at number eight. Why do people work at a job? Hmm, think about that. Why do people work at a job? Well, for me, I really love my job. I really enjoy it. And hopefully when someone works at a job, it is something that they enjoy. And also too, people work at a job because they need to earn money, right? We need money in order to buy things and provide for ourselves. So we also need a job in order to earn money. Let's take a look at nine. Which of these is a good? Okay, which of these is a good. Remember, a good is things people make or grow to sell. Which one is a good? A, haircut. B, doctor. C, car wash. D, bicycle. Which one is a good? Hmm. 
Someone had to make or grow this to sell it. You cannot make or grow a haircut to sell it. You cannot make or grow a doctor to sell it. You cannot make or grow a car wash to sell it. But you can make a bicycle to sell it. So D is a good. 10. Which of these is a place where people put their money to keep it safe? Hmm. Which of these is a place where people put their money to keep it safe? A. Bank. B. Market. C. Factory. D. Business. The best option would be A. Bank. Great job. When you're ready, let's turn the page. Here we have two different types of graphs. Let's get started right here. This one's called Mr. Wilson's Toy Store. Number of teddy bears sold. We have the days of the week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And it shows us how many teddy bears were sold for each day. Down here, this tells us one picture of a teddy bear is equal to one teddy bear. So when we count them, we know each picture represents one. Let's answer some questions. Number 13, what does this graph show? Oh, it shows how many pairs of shoes Miss Arnsey owns. No, not this graph, no, okay, maybe not. Try again, what does this graph show? This graph shows the number of teddy bears sold at Mr. Wilson's toy store. Okay, let's take a look. 14. How many teddy bears were sold on Monday? Look carefully. Find Monday and count how many teddy bears. Should we count it in Spanish? See, let's take a look. Monday. Ready? In Spanish. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro. How many teddy bears were sold on Monday? Four. Four on Monday. Fifteen. On which two days were the same number of teddy bears sold? Okay, think carefully here. On which two days were the same number of teddy bears sold? We're looking for two days where the amount of teddy bears was the same. Look very carefully here on your chart. Count. This will take a few moments. I'll give you just a few moments to try this. Find two days where the amount of teddy bears was the same. Could you find them? Let's look together. When I look at Monday, I see no other day aligns with the same amount. So I'm gonna scoot down to Tuesday. Tuesday ends here. This one has that, but it has another one, so that's not the same. But look here, this does match. Tuesday has one, two, three, four, five. Friday has one, two, three, four, five. So the two days that have the same amount of teddy bears, Tuesday and Friday. Let's look at 16. On which day were the fewest teddy bears sold? Which one has the fewest? That's pretty easy to spot. Wednesday, because it only has one. Great, we have one more page to do. Let's look together. This is Mr. Wheel's Car Repair Services. Here we have a list of car repairs. And down below, they have this number graph to help us know how many services were performed. Let's take a look at what the services are. Oil change, car wash, Fix flat tire, new brakes. Now let's answer some questions. 17. What services does Mr. Wheel do for people? He gives people haircuts. No? Not, no? Wrong Mr. Wheel? Okay. Um, Mr. Wheel makes and scoops ice cream. No? Not 
this one? No? Okay. All right, let's try again. What, what services does Mr. Wheel actually provide to people? Well, it says right here, he's a car repair service. So let's see what the, the options are. Oil change, car wash, fix flat tires, and new brakes. These four are the services that he performs. 18. What service did most people need? Which one has the most? It's pretty easy to see which bar is the furthest. So here we have this longest one. This is car wash. 19. How many people took their cars to Mr. Wheel for an oil change? Okay, look specifically at oil change. Find oil change and count and see how many needed an oil change. Look carefully. Here we go to oil change. We slide across our bar. And when we go down, we see this lines up with six. Six people needed an oil change. And 20. How many people needed new brakes? Look for new brakes. That's your keyword right here. How many people needed new brakes? New brakes? Two. Good review today. Make sure if you are interested, you can check out some of those How It's Made videos. And next social studies, you'll be totally ready to go for our Unit 6 test.